Hello and welcome to part 33 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, we'll be talking about how to create hard edges on smooth objects. Now I'm starting off this video actually with a couple of objects in my scene. They're both shoes and they're both identical because I want to talk about two ways that you can create hard edges on smooth objects. In this video, we'll be talking about using a few different tools. I'll be talking about using creases. I'll be talking about using hard edges and the edge split modifier, as well as how to use proximity loops to create hard edges on the second shoe. Now let's go ahead and zoom in on the first shoe. And the first way we're going to make hard edges on this shoe is, of course, well, first we have to make it smooth. So to make this shoe smooth, I'll go ahead and press the smooth shading button on my tool shelf, and that will just basically change the shading of my faces from being shaded all individually, different shades of gray in this case, to being all blended together. So I'll click on smooth. When I do that, you'll notice that we get some issues around the hard edges or where there's an angle of more than about 80 degrees between two faces. If I zoom in on the opening of at the top of my shoe, you'll see that I get these dark areas. And these are normals problems. These are problems with the direction of the faces and how it smooths faces when there's a big angle between the two. In reality, Yes, the shoe might be smooth, but wherever there's a hard edge of more than 60 or 70 or 80 degrees, those two sections would not be smooth together. It would have to be a much smoother object in reality to be smooth like that. The same thing is true at the bottom of the shoe. We get normals issues, this dark or light shading depending on where you look, and so that's a problem. How we can solve that though, a little bit at least, is by making the object actually smooth. If I go over to my properties window and go to the wrench modifiers tab, we're going to add the subdivision surface modifier, which will actually make the mesh smooth. So we'll click on the subsurf modifier, it adds itself to the mesh, and I'll turn the number of subdivisions up to two. And this, of course, makes the whole mesh very smooth. But now all those hard edges that we had, including the edges around the base of the leather part of the shoe at the top of the sole, the hard edge at the bottom of the, of the shoe, or the bottom of the sole of the shoe, disappears. It's now very rounded here. And the hard edges around the opening at the top of the shoe disappear as well. I want to get those back. So what I'll do is I'll press tab to go into edit mode. And the first thing I'll do is I'll mark some of these edges as creases. To do this, I'll make sure nothing is selected by pressing the A key a few times and I'll zoom in on the opening of the shoe and I'll hold Alt and right click on an edge to select the edge loop around where I want to mark a crease. To mark a crease I press Control E to bring up my edges menu, that's Control E and I mark an edge crease. I can also use the Shift E key, that's the keyboard shortcut in this case. So I'll press Shift E and when you do that, you have to pull away from the selection or move in towards the selection to mark the crease or to turn off the crease. You'll notice that when I pull out and in, you'll notice that it's making the edge actually change shape or at least shading. And if I pull it all the way out so it's all the way pink, um, I've turned the factor of crease up to one or 100%. I can change that factor over here. So if I wanna turn the crease off, I could press Shift E move my mouse all the way to the middle of the crease and then change the factor all the way down to negative one. Okay, but I'll turn it up again, shift D, pull it out, click, and now it has a factor of one. It is a crease. If I press tab to go back into object mode, you notice that the edge did get harder, but we still have these normals issues. Okay, we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but let's go ahead and mark all of the edges that we want as creases as creases. So I'll press tab to go back into edit mode. Select this edge, Shift E, pull out, click, go down to the next one, hold Alt and right click, can Shift E, pull out to make it a crease. In this case, you can see it, it is quite dramatic. I'll undo that and do it again. Shift E, pull out, and it actually does change the shape of the mesh, and that's a great thing. We get our crease back. The last one I'll do is I'll hold Alt and right click, and then Shift and Alt and right click, and get the entire um, bottom edge of my shoe, and I'll press Shift E and pull out, and again, you can see it deforming the mesh back to the original hard edges, and that's great. When I press tab, though, you'll see that I still have those really ugly normals issues, and yes, that does render out, even if you have a material, it will show up. It's something that you don't wanna have on your final mesh. How do you solve that? Well, it's actually a two-step process. 
First, I need to mark those same edges with a second tag. I need to mark it not only as a crease, but as a hard edge. And the reason I have to do that is because we're going to be using a modifier called the Edge Split Modifier to actually split the mesh sort of virtually using a modifier uh, wherever we mark those hard edges. So to do this, I'm going to press Tab to go back into edit mode. And I'm actually going to hide these pink lines because they actually cover up hard edges. So what I'll do is I'll go over here to my properties panel with this little plus, or you can press the N key to bring it up. And in the mesh display section in this properties panel, we can now hide or show these colored overlays. I'm going to turn off creases. I don't want to see them anymore because they cover up sharp edges. And I'm going to mark the same edges that I have as creases as hard edges. To do that, I'll press A a few times to deselect everything, Alt right click on the same edges, and Control E from my edges menu and mark these ones as sharp. Not to be confused with mark seam, mark sharp. Uh, the color of the sharp edges is this sort of turquoise color. Mark sharp does not have a factor, it's just either on or off. So we'll quickly go around, Alt right click, Control E, mark sharp. Same thing down here, Alt right click, Control E, mark sharp. And again down here, Alt right click, and then I have to go around because this one has corners and control E mark sharp now that I've marked those edges as sharp and as creases and I can hide sharp and I can show creases if you don't believe me but if you, ha if you have them both turned on you only see the creases unfortunately and I'll press tab to go back into object mode and how we get rid of these normals issues is I'm gonna add a second modifier and it's important that we add it after the subsurf modifier in other words it'll be visually below the subsurf modifier on the modifier stack, but really above the, that modifier, if you follow. Um, so with the object selected in object mode, I'll add the edge split modifier. And again, this splits the mesh um, into separate sub-objects when you add it, and we're gonna add it after the subsurf modifier, so it'll appear below. And as you can see now, those normals issues disappear. Uh, if I hide this modifier for a moment, you'll see that they, those problems come back, and if I show it again, it'll disappear. So that's great. That's the result that we want. If I turn off edge angle, that's totally okay, but I have to leave this sharp edges option uh, checked because that's the option that uses our sh marked sharp edges as the one that, or as the edges that it uses to actually split the mesh apart. If I don't have this checked and only have edge angle checked, it will only use the edges that it thinks it should based on your split angle. So you can leave this one on or off, but the sharp edges is the one that we actually want, and I'll just turn it off just because. So that's one method of making hard edges on smooth objects. I'm gonna flip over to the other shoe now and show you the second method, which might give you slightly better results if you're looking for not quite so harsh of an edge. The first method that we used is great. It makes hard edges on smooth objects. The problem with this method is that it makes perfectly sharp edges. In reality though, edges wouldn't be quite so distinctly sharp like a razor blade. They would be, or there would be a little bit of softness in the edges, especially on a fabric or leather shoe like this. So the other method is great. It gives you good results, but unfortunately it makes your mesh more complex. First off, let's make this mesh smooth. I'll click on the smooth shading in my tool shelf and I'll add the subsurf modifier exactly the same as before. And I'll turn the modifier up to have two subdivisions or two view subdivisions. And we get that blob-like shoe again. Now to make the edges hard, I don't have to mark any seams. I don't have to use any more modifiers. All I have to do is add more edges. When you're using the subsurf modifier, when you have two edges that are close together, it makes a sharp edge. Well, in this case, we're gonna make proximity edges around all of the edges that we wanna be sharp. In fact, we're gonna make two extra edges around all of the edge loops that we wanna be sharp. So I'll press Control R to do a loop cut in this case, and I'll click and I'll slide the loop cut all the way down almost until the, the one that I wanna make sharp. And if I press Tab, it makes that edge almost sharp. The problem with only having one extra loop cut though is that it doesn't necessarily get rid of all of those normals issues. Right now it's sort of hard to see, but what I need to do here is make a loop cut or an extra edge above and below or on both sides of the original edge. So what I'll do is I'll press Control R and then 
when I get the right edge I'll click and slide it up and then click again. So now I really have three edges where there was just one before, new one on both sides. If I press tab to go back into object mode, you'll see that I have a hard edge, but it's not perfectly hard, and that's probably what I want. I'll continue with this. You'll see that right now I still have some normals issues around the rounded part of the bottom part of the shoe. So what I'll do is I'll press tab, I'll do a control R on the bottom of the sole of the shoe, click, pull this down, turn about there, great. For the bottom of the shoe, I can't do a loop cut. That won't work, so I'll press escape. I have to inset all of the faces on the bottom of the shoe. I'm just gonna go ahead and press C to do a circle select. When you press C, you get to actually just paint a selection, and you have to press enter to make it permanent. And now I'll press I M to make an inset, and I'll pull it in a little bit um, to read about there. Now I have three edges where there was just one, and I have a hard edge and I'll do the same thing very quickly around the opening at the top of the shoe. Control R, click, click. Control R, click, click. Control R again, click right there. And on the inside of the shoe, Control R, click, and right there. All right, so that's two ways of making hard edges on smooth objects. Uh, that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.